I'm oral historian Mike Chappelle. Today, June 19th, 2010, I'm interviewing Dr. Roger Gieleman for the Endocrine Society at its annual meeting being held this year at the San Diego Convention Center. Pomerat had a big laboratory doing tissue cultures, including tissue cultures of the brain. So I went to Galveston uh, to Pomerat's laboratory, introduced myself and, and telling him I would like to be shown what he was doing. And I, again, remember very well Pomerat, who insisted to speak to me in French, the most perfect, slow, academic French always looking for le mot juste, you know, the right word to say. And he showed me through other lab and showed me some of his time-lapse movie photography, which I'd never even heard of, of cells, including neurons. And so we went through the lab. And again, I never forgot, when we came to this part of the lab, there was this young fellow who was at his microscope and and he said, this is Barry Rosenberg, one of our graduate students. He's doing cultures of the pituitary, the anterior lobe. And he said, you know, those tissue cultures, they grow for days, for weeks, for months. And he's doing a good job. They're in good shape. He said, but by the way, we have been looking for secretion of hormones by those cells in tissue cultures. And they start secreting when we put them in, in culture. And while they keep growing for weeks and months, they stop making hormones. And I said, what are you talking about? What hormone? Well, he said, you know, we take the fluid from the culture and we inject it in, in uh, rabbits or whatever to using a pregnancy test, which would tell us whether they make gonadotropins. And I said, sir, I think I know why your pituitaries are not working after a few days, you put them in culture, they are missing something coming from the hypothalamus. And I'll never forget when uh, I added those crude extracts of the hypothalamus or a small fragment of hypothalamus in the culture tube and was doing the testing in the fluid for secretion, in fact, um, looking for ACTH, not the gonadotropins, because uh, there was a relatively simple bioassay for ACTH called the Sayers test, which was measuring ascorbic acid in the adrenal gland, uh, which was very rapid. You could get an answer in one day instead of a couple of days or weeks uh, with the gonadotropins. And sure enough, I showed uh, to my satisfaction uh, by following the secretion of ACTH uh, from the moment of putting in the culture for the next few days, including the time of putting either the hypothalamic extract or the fragment of tissue, that, uh, as Pomerat had said, the secretion of ACTH or pituitary hormone would disappear after about four days. But if I put the fragment of hypothalamus or the crude extract, then I would immediately restart secretion of, in this case, ACTH. And I said, now that's the way to proceed and eventually look for what these molecules are. In, in Paris, I decided that with Jutis as the chemist, we would start looking for another of these hypothetical uh, hypothalamic substances which would control the secretion of TSH. They were good reason from the early work of Harris and his stimulation or uh, lesion in the hypothalamus, that there was a controlling molecule of brain to pituitary for the secretion of tyrotropin, of TSH. And I de devised a very simple, uh, incredibly simple uh, bioassay using the radioiodine that uh, the Courier's laboratory had available over there. Uh, a very quick bioassay uh, for the secretion, stimulating the secretion of TSH. And sure enough, within uh, a year, we were able to publish a note in the French compte rendu of the academy uh, demonstrating the presence in the hypothalamic extract of some molecule which stimulated the secretion 
of thyrotropin and eventually thyroid, uh, thyroid hormones. It was still the early days of purification, but it was obvious that this was the, the way to go. Uh, in 1969, we were able, we were convinced that we had pure thyrotropin releasing factor, TRH, TRF, yes, we call it in those days. And that it was a small molecule composed of three amino acids. We knew that for a fact we had unquestionable evidence that the molecule which we had isolated, uh, and we had evidence, I repeat, that this was the, uh, you know, the, what we had isolated was essentially composed of three amino acids, uh, histidine, uh, uh, glutamic acid, uh, histidine and proline in an acetate form, and it was in pure form. It was very much the beginning of, of separating uh, peptides in the mass spectrometer to establish the various fragments. And uh, we were able to obtain a perfectly reliable mass spectrum, low resolution, of the synthetic uh, pyrogluis proamide. Then we put the native molecule in the same system, and lo and behold, we had absolutely identical, identical mass spectra. So there was a fateful date, which I think was June 19, 1969, where for the first time, Burgess was able to write on the blackboard the structure of a native uh, thyrotropin releasing factor, and we published that immediately in the French compte rendu, because the, in those days, those French compte rendu, uh, in contradistinction to, to science or proceedings, where, which took weeks and months of reviews and so on, the, the publication go very fast. And there is no doubt in my mind that uh, we were, our group was the first in that publication to report the complete structure of, uh, and final, final structure of the tyrotropin releasing factor as pyrogluis proamide. So that was to me the, what I've called earlier the uh, inflection point in that field of, of research, the structure of TRF. Then the next thing, the next step of course was to go after the other molecules, the one releasing gonadotropins, uh, releasing growth hormone, and uh, which we knew had to exist. And of course, we had no idea what it was, what they were, and also ACTH.